good morning students let us start the itc class till now in this particular module we have been discussing about a special concept of equivocation and using that how do we get the mutual information and using the mutual information how do we actually find out the channel efficiency in fact it is the mutual information which is the actual information which is received at the destination that was transmitted from the source so regarding that we had uh, solved some exercises also and we had been focusing specially on binary symmetric channel where we used to assume that p00 equals p11 a binary channel is the one which will transmit and receive only two symbols even the source symbols will be two destination symbols will be two and the probability of uh, obtaining y1 when x1 is transmitted if it is equal to the probability of obtaining y2 when x2 is transmitted then that is called as a symmetric channel means when a zero is transmitted if zero is received the probability of that p00 is same as when one was transmitted and one was received that is equal to p11 so if p00 equals p11 then we call it as a symmetric channel as there were only two symbols we call it as binary symmetric channel from today's class onwards let us see some other special channels the first channel which we discuss now is also a symmetric channel and it is called as a uniform channel but it need not be a binary symmetric channel now there can be more number of uh, input symbols more than two so a symmetric or uniform channel is a channel that is said to be symmetric or uniform if all the rows contain the same elements but with different order all the rows contain the same elements but with different order you can see here 0 0.3 0 0.2 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.3 0 0.2 0 0.5 0.3 is all the rows contain the same element what does it mean what is this 0 0.3 p of y1 slash x1 p of y2 slash x1 p of y3 slash x1 now again whatever of p of y3 slash x1 here it has become p of y1 slash x2 and p of whatever was in the first row it was p of y1 slash x1 here it has become p of uh, y2 slash x2 and whatever was p of y2 slash x1 here it has become p of y3 slash x2 lastly it is the same way that means all the rows contain the same elements but with a different order you can see that 0.5 plus 0.2 plus 0.3 is 1 at the same time you can see in the column also that 0.5 plus 0.3 plus 0.2 is 1 here also 0.2 plus 0.3 plus 0.5 is 1 here also 0.5 plus 0.2 plus 0.3 is 1 now we have written a conditional matrix here this is not a joint probability matrix this is a conditional matrix p of b slash a in terms of conditional probabilities but when it says that all the rows contain the same elements but with a different order what does it mean the sum of the rows is anyhow going to equal to 1 because that is the probability of x1 being transmitted but here it is the conditional probability that is also becoming 1 which means what here p of y1 is being obtained directly that means in such cases we don't have to go for joint probability matrix that is the point here if the channel is symmetric or uniform then we need not construct the joint probability matrix here just by the channel matrix or the noise matrix it is possible to obtain the other entropy data that is the main point here so in such a case the sum of column elements is also equal to 1 therefore h of b slash a can be directly obtained from p of b slash a earlier we had to construct joint probability matrix by using the matrix we had to compute the equivocation or the mutual information now here we can directly obtain equivocation from the channel matrix or the noise matrix and by using that we can find out mutual information as well that is the idea here 
So now, how do we say it is directly obtained? Summation of j equals 1 to m of p of bj slash ai equals 1 for all ai. For all values of i, summation of the conditional probabilities is equal to 1. Therefore, summation of i equals 1 to m of p of bj slash a equals 1 for all j also. For all the output symbols also, for all the input symbols also, it is going to be 1. So, in such a case, it is called as a uniform or symmetric matrix. So, by definition, h of b slash a is summation of i equals 1 to m, summation of j equals 1 to m of p of a i comma b j, the joint probability into L g of 1 over p of b j slash a i, the conditional probability. This is by definition. We can write this as summation of i equals 1 to m, summation of j equals 1 to m, p of a i into p of b j slash a i. This joint probability is nothing but the product of the source symbol probability into its own conditional probability into L g of 1 over p of b j slash a i as all the rows contain the same elements now h of b slash a equals summation of i equals 1 to m summation of j equals 1 to m of p of a i into p j L g of 1 over p j. Why? This particular thing p of bj slash a i l g of 1 over bj slash a i can be written in this fashion p j l g of 1 over p j because all the rows are going to contain the same elements and all the rows are going to contain the same elements when we do a summation naturally we get this j equals 1 to m of p j l g of 1 over p j now this is nothing but summation of i equals 1 to m of p of a i we will sub put this this side summation of j equals 1 time of pj lg of 1 over pj. So now what is this h of b slash a equals summation of j equals 1 time of pj lg of 1 over pj. Why? Because summation of i equals 1 time of p of vi is equal to unity. The sum of all the probabilities of the source symbols is going to be unity. So we can directly write h of b slash a equals summation of j equals 1 to m of pj lg of 1 over pj. This is a mathematical derivation for the summation of the column elements which will yield the equivocation. This is the mathematical proof. So, whenever we have a symmetric channel or a uniform channel, we need not construct the joint probability matrix. Instead, by summing the column elements, we get the probability of destination symbols. By summing the row elements, we get the probability of source symbols. We can use both of them. Sorry, I told wrongly. The sum of column elements is going to give the equivocation. Okay. And the sum of row elements is going to give the source symbol probabilities. Now, using these two, we can find out the uh, mutual information. So, now the channel capacity C for 1 bit per channel use is given by C equals, we already know it is the maximum mutual information content or C equals H of B maximum minus H of B slash A. H of B will be maximum when all the received symbols are equiprobable. This we already know. So, H of B maximum is equal to LG of M. So, we can write the expression for the channel capacity now as lg of m minus h of, h of b slash a. This is applicable to the uniform channel or the symmetric channel. We know that h of b maximum is corresponding to lg of m. And this h of b slash a itself is going to be obtained here. Because we want to actually find out the mutual information. So, h of b slash a will be directly obtained from the channel matrix itself. That way, we can write the channel capacity equals LG of M minus H of B slash A. Let us solve an exercise. Find the channel capacity for the example stated above for RS equals 500 symbols per second. 
can you do this now this is the example this is that channel matrix can you find out h of b slash a then find out h of a you will get i of a semicolon b then later on i will give you the other data can you at least give me the answer for mutual information let me see how many students are there now there are 25 students please solve this quickly and tell me the answer Okay, Kuldeep has given the answer as C equals 49.73. Let us see. So, H of B slash A is summation of J equals 1 to 3 of PJ LG of 1 over PJ, right? So, that is 0.3 LG of 1 over 0.3 plus 0.2 LG of 1 over 0.2 plus 0.5 LG of 1 over 0.5. As all rows contain the same elements. So, it is 1.48555 bits per symbol. Now, C is what? LG of 3 minus 1.4855. LG of 3, LG of M minus this H of B slash A. Actually, you don't have to find out H of A as well because we have already formula here. Into RS is 500. So, LG of 3 is 0 0.0996 into 500 equals 49.8 bits per second. Yeah, Kuldeep has got 49.73 bits per second. Very good, Kuldeep. Let me continue the class now. This is a slightly different one. So, let me not ask you to solve this. Let me show you the solution by myself. Find the channel capacity for the given noise diagram with RS equals 1000 symbols per second. RS is given 1000. Now, the channel capacity. We can write, out, write the channel matrix now. B1 slash A1 is given, B2 slash A1 is given, B3 slash A1 is given, B4 slash A1 is not given. Again, B1 slash A2 is there, B2 slash A2 is not there, that is 0. B3 slash A2 is there, B4 slash A2 is there. Now, B3 slash A1 is there, B3 slash A2 is there, B3 A3 is there. And uh, again, B4, again only 2 are there. Can such channel be possible is my question. We have A1, A2, A3 and we have B1, B2, B3, B4. We have additional symbol here. Can that be possible is my question. Can that be possible? Till now we have been seeing any channels having only three source symbols, three destination symbols. Now in the destination we have four symbols. Can that be possible is my question. Can anyone answer? No. Yes. 
Kuldeep says no. But this example is there in front of you. <laughs> example is there in front of you. <laughs> it can be possible because we are dealing with special channels now. We are not dealing with normal, ordinary, common channels. We are dealing with special channels. Such channels are possible. How is it possible? Let me tell you later. Okay. Let me first show you the solution for this. And let me tell why such channels exist later on. So now the noise matrix we can write. P of B slash A equals. It is given there as per the given values. It is 0 0.6, 0 0.2, 0 0.20. 0 0.6, 0 0.20. 0 0.6, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So you can see it is a symmetric channel itself. It is a uniform channel. Even though there are four destination symbols, three source symbols. Still, the matrix is uniform as per our definition. Because all the rows contain the same elements but in different orders. Okay. But here, again 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2, 0 0.8, 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2, 0 0.8. The row elements all will yield to unity. Whereas the column elements will not yield to unity as such. You can see that it is only 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2, 0 0.8 for the first two columns. For the third column, it is 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2. That is 1. For the last column, it is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2, 0 0.4. So, this is a slightly different type of channel. But as per our definition, it is still a uniform channel. Because only the row elements are common here. That is what was our definition. Now, as this is a symmetric channel, h of b slash a equals summation of j equals 1 to 4 of pj lg of 1 over pj. We get this h of b slash a 1.3711 bits per symbol. Now, c is lg of 4 minus 1.3711 into 1000 is the rs given. So, it is 628 bits per symbol. Okay. So, that is the channel capacity. Coming back to my question. Can such channel be possible is my question. The answer is, it is possible that way if the source alphabet and destination alphabet are different as such, whereas a destination alphabet may also have an additional symbol. Now here along with B1, B2, B3, there is this B4. Now the destination alphabet can define its own uh, set of symbols which can vary with respect to source. Now you may ask, how is it possible? You may ask. But as special channels are there, the special channels may also define their own characteristics based on the noise, right? If the source is transmitting A1, A2, A3, if the destination is receiving B1, B2, B3, then we say it is a perfect channel as such. But at times, even noise can be information. Do you agree? At times, even noise can be information. When you switch on the television set for the broadcasting uh, channels of Doordarshan or any such government channel, I'm not talking about cable TV. I'm talking about the government channels because cable TV, 24 hours it is on. The channel will never turn off. Whereas in broadcast channels, they don't broadcast 24 hours in a day. So, before they start broadcasting, let us say morning 5.30 is their broadcasting scheduled time. Before 5.30, let us say by 5.15, they will have a pattern of pictures on the screen. Simply some colors on the screen. And simply there will be one sound coming, 1 kilohertz standard sound. Now, for you it may be a noise. But it is basically an information at that time. That broadcast will start in a few minutes. Until this time, the television screen is having these colors, means it is going to broadcast audio and video together. Sound is also there, 1 kilohertz, the sound will be there. It's a continuous sound. Same way, whether they follow this in the FM radio or not, I don't know. FM radio government channels follow that, even now. Private channels, whether they follow or not, I don't know. But the AM radio broadcast channels of the government, even now they have this system. Let us say morning 6 o'clock is the AM radio broadcasting happening. They will have that tone by around uh, 5.45. And that sound will keep on coming. Which means the broadcast is scheduled and it will happen on time. 
now for others that may be a noise but for you that is an information i am not comparing here source and destination don't think there again you may say that sir it is the source only transmitting that particular tone yes that is right in the case of radio broadcast it is right but i am telling you that at times noise also can be information right if let us say adjacent to your house if there is a crow and the crow is making a sound cow 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 for you it is a noise but for another crow that is an information right <laughs> and for the bird watcher for him also that is an information for you it may be a noise for a bird watcher it is an information if you are interested in this particular course and whatever i am talking right now that is an information for you right otherwise if you are getting bored with the course right now whatever i am talking that may be a noise for you also it depends on how you take it right now need this this for in this particular example the destination is more intelligent than the source the destination has defined another symbol as part of its character set because it may receive another symbol as part of the input source symbols only then based on this it may predict the amount of noise for example if a1 a2 a3 are there b1 b2 b3 are there then it is a straight forward channel straight forward communication and reception b4 is not defined in the source b4 is defined in the destination but b4 received when a2 was transmitted b4 is received when a3 was transmitted what does it mean when a2 and a3 were transmitted b4 was received which means now the destination can predict the quality of the channel by using this b4 itself the destination knows that b4 is not transmitted from the source but if b4 is received then the destination predict the uh, quality of the channel itself based on this particular special symbol that was defined okay that is the idea here that is why i am discussing the special channels to give you one more uh, last example because let me proceed to the next topic later on to give you one more last example in between us we have lot of routers and switches when we are connected together there is a osi model working you will study more about osi model in the future courses osi model has an abbreviation all people seem to need data processing if you remember this sentence you remember those seven layers all people seem to need data processing this is one particular special sentence if you remember this sentence you will remember the seven layers of osi model all people seem to need data processing a application layer p presentation layer c yes session layer t transport layer n network layer uh then network layer d data link layer then uh, all people seem to need data processing f physical layer p physical layer physical data link network transport session presentation application these are the seven layers right now on my laptop screen i am having a pdf uh, uh, file opened up that pdf file is opened by means of an adobe acrobat reader that adobe acrobat is an application layer now the below the application layer there is a presentation layer means how to present the binary content on to a screen in a textual fashion in a graphical fashion that is presentation layer below presentation layer there is session layer the operating system is going to divide all its uh, tasks into sessions and session by session they are going to be executed so the upper three layers are basically part of the operating system itself or the computer system itself application presentation session below which we have transport layer that means between you and me there is the transportation of data happening 
that means the system itself should have this data which is organized to be transmitted that is transport layer and below which there is a network layer for the transportation to happen there must be a networking protocol the bits must be arranged as packets and the packets have to be switched that is called network layer now below network layer there is this data link layer where the data will be linked actually in connection with the network layer so that each packet will have its header information it will have its trailing information it will have information bits it will have many other things in between you are going to study all these things when you come to final year okay so last is the physical layer what is the physical layer physical layer is the actual voltage and current zero is zero volts one is that vdd or the supply voltage or it is actually if it is uh, a modulation then it is ask waveform psk waveform fsk waveform like that or if it is a pulse code modulation stream then it is a complete stream of bits being transmitted so we have physical layer data link layer network layer transport layer session layer presentation layer application layer now if there are these many layers why did i bring that here into picture for all these layers we have these routers and switchers which are working in layer 2 and 3 in between you and me from the laptop signal goes all the way through the broadband network to the uh, switch which is installed in this particular lab then through the switch it will go to the router from the router it will go to the upper layers so there is a routing protocol in between you and me where or whatever i speak here whatever i present here is being routed all the way to your system so many times these routers can be intelligent in the sense there can be many paths available between two terminals now out of these many paths the routers have to choose the highly optimized path how the routers choose the highly optimized path is based on the characterization of each path now when i leave malishram to come to my college morning i take one route evening i take another route based on my own experience even though there are so many paths available i have optimized on these two paths morning why i come via mg road evening i go via kasturi nagar i purposefully go that way because evening in that route even though there is uh, distance is 2 kilometers more less number of signals and time will be saved morning anyhow there will be less traffic in the mg road side signals are lesser i can reach faster and the uh, distance is lesser there so this is how i have optimized my coming route and going route based on my experience same way the routers will gradually learn about the optimized paths and they will choose particular paths in such cases if at all the router is having an additional symbol which is defined then it is possible that the router will know whenever it receives b4 it knows i am not supposed to receive b4 i am receiving b4 means this particular channel is not really very reliable that way the destination can make a decision here the destination is the router source is me imagine that way now if at all the router receives this b4 then it means that it was not supposed to receive b4 that means channel is noisy that way if at all the router knows or the destination knows let us say b4 is not at all received for a1 a2 a3 still b4 can be defined in its character set set it may not receive b4 at all the probability of b4 for a1 a2 a3 can be zero always then they can and the router can come to a conclusion the channel is a, a good channel or the reliable channel so even though you think that such channels are not possible such channels may not be possible such destination can be possible right here b4 is defined as one of the symbols at the destination so that way it can be possible that is the idea here okay good kuldeep that you solved this previous exercise 
Now let me come to a binary symmetric channel. We are already familiar with this. Till now we have been discussing regular symmetric channel or uniform channel. Now you already know this binary symmetric channel. I don't have to go in much detail. Only thing is we can direct an expression for C as LG of 2 because here M is 2. LG of 2 minus H of Y slash X. So now here P of Y slash X is P, P, 1 minus P, 1 minus P. So the channel is symmetric here, right? It has, it will contain the same elements now. As the channel is symmetric now, P of Y slash H of Y slash X is P LG of 1 over P plus 1 minus P LG of 1 over minus P. See here, P is 0, 0. I think I made, I have written it wrongly. I am sorry, I have written this wrongly. When I prepared the notes, I must have been in a hurry. This have to be P and 1 minus P and 1 minus P and P. Please make those corrections. Let me annotate it here. This has to be P and 1 minus P, right? P 0, 0 and P 1, 0. This corresponds to Y 1, Y 2, P 1, 0. This is P 0, 1, P is 1 minus P. This has to be P. Okay. While writing, I have written it maybe in a hurry or maybe out of oversight. Because uh, at times what happens is, my thinking will be faster, my speaking will be faster, my writing will be slower. Naturally, it is so with everyone. Hands will be slower, mouth will be slightly faster, brain will be still more faster. That way I would have written this. Anyway, you take it as P and 1 minus P and 1 minus P and P. Now this channel is symmetric. Let me continue now. So, as the channel is symmetric, H of Y slash X is P L G of 1 over P plus 1 minus P L G of 1 over minus P. For a binary symmetric channel, L G of 2 is 1. So, C equals 1 minus this H of Y slash X. Let us have an exercise. Can you do this? The noise matrix of a BSC is given here. P of X1 is 0 0.6, P of X2 is 0.4, P of Y slash X is 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.7. Find the channel capacity, efficiency and redundancy. Can you solve this quickly? I expect some of you to solve this and give me the answer quickly. Tell me at least the channel capacity. Other two answers I will show you. Anjali has given the answer 0.1187 bits per second. Okay, let me wait for some more answers, then I will tell you whether it is right or wrong. Okay, Kuldeep has given the answer 0.1187 bits per second. Manideep has given the answer 0.118 bits per second. Indrajit has given the answer 0.118 bits per second. Good that. My students are responding. Fine. Let me show you the answer. The channel capacity is C equals 1 minus 0.7 LG of 1 over 0.7 plus 0.3 LG of 1 over 0.3. That is 1 minus 0.8813 is 0.1187 bits per second. So the answer is correct. Now let us find out the efficiency and redundancy because the source symbol probabilities are given now. Harshita has given the answer 0.1187. Good. So now H of Y slash X is 0 0.3602 plus 0 0.25211 that is 0.8813. This we already have it here, right? 0.8813. So now P of X comma Y, we have to write the joint probability now. Chandra Mohan has given the answer 0 0.1187. Good. So P of X comma Y is 0 0.42, 0 0.18, 0 0.12, 0 0.28. We have written the joint probability matrix for this. So now P of Y1, why we have written the joint probability matrix? 
because we have to find out the efficiency and redundancy. We have to find out h of y also, right? For channel capacity, h of y need not have been known. h of x slash y would have been enough, right? But uh, for uh, finding out efficiency and redundancy, destination entropy is required. So we have to write the JPM. JPM is written P of y1 is 0.54, summation of the first column. Similarly, summation of the second column, P of y2 is 0.46. So h of y, we get it as 0.9954 bits per symbol. So now mutual information, i of x semicolon y is h of y minus h of y slash x. That is 0 0.9954 minus 0 0.8813. That is 0 0.1141 bits per symbol. So the efficiency is... 0.1141 by 0.1187. What is this 0.1141? Mutual information. What is this 0.1187? That is the C. We already know this efficiency is uh, I of x semicolon y divided by C. So 0.1141 divided by 0.1187 is 96.12 percent. So the redundancy is 1 minus eta channel is 3.88 percent. We are discussing one different type of channel now called as binary erasure channel. <laughs> Look at this now. This is called binary erasure channel. Here also the number of destination symbols are more than the number of source symbols. I had told you earlier about we can have intelligent uh, methodology that way to characterize the channels. I gave you an example of router there. You can relate it to any other types of such intelligent networks there. Here we are discussing about one particular channel called binary erasure channel where you have a different symbol called Y. Now you can see here, you can see here this is something different. When 0 is transmitted, 0 can be received. When 1 is transmitted, 1 can be received. But y1 is received when x1 is transmitted. But y1 is not received when x2 is transmitted. Instead, y is received. Similarly, y2 is received when x2 is transmitted. But y2 is not received when x1 is transmitted. Instead, y is received. Which means what? This is not like my previous example also. This is something different. Okay, this is an error. In this type of channel, whenever an error occurs, the symbol received is neither y1 nor y2, but a third symbol called y. Means, whenever an error occurs, there is another symbol defined at the destination called y, and this will be received. This is a channel itself is now a special channel, which means there is there is additional symbol defined at the receiver. That is fine. But that additional symbol, how it is received? Because of the channel itself, whenever error occurs. Otherwise, Y2 must have been received when X1 was transmitted. Then we can say it is a conditional probability. Here it is not so. That is why I am telling this is a different type of channel itself. Okay. So, I will repeat, in this type of channel, whenever an error occurs, the symbol received is neither y1 nor y2, but a third symbol called y. Hence, when y is received, no decision is taken and an ARQ is made by means of a reverse channel until the correct symbol is received. Let me explain this. Whenever the receiver receives this y, which is not part of the source, then the receiver knows it is a error. When the receiver knows this is an error, no decision is taken at the receiver. Instead, an ARQ, automatic repeat request. It is like, let us say when you and me are talking together or communicating together, let us say at one point of time, you may not, uh, you may not really understand whatever word I pronounced, you will immediately say what? You will say, Pardon me, or you will say, excuse me, please tell that once again. You will say that. In the same manner, now the receiver received the third symbol, 
Now the receiver knows that the proper information is not received. Now the receiver will tell the transmitter back by asking it to send it once again. It is like receiver telling to the transmitter, excuse me, pardon me, tell it once again. That is called automatic repeat request. This is one of the communication protocols. This is made by means of a reverse channel until the correct symbol is received. That means from the receiver to the transmitter or from the destination to the source, there must be one more channel established for the destination to communicate back to the source by sending this request. So now the communication overhead is more in this particular case means we need one more reverse channel until the correct symbol is received. Now here as the error is totally erased, you remember the error is totally erased. Whenever an error occurs, ARQ will go. Until the correct symbol is received, ARQ will keep going. So such channel is called binary erasure channel. Okay. Now you can see here, when Y1 is received when X1 is transmitted, Y1 is not received when X2 is transmitted. Similarly, Y2 is not received when X1 is transmitted. That means Y1 and Y2 are completely safe that way. Whenever error is there, Y will be received. That Y will neither be 0 nor be 1. It may be something else. Okay. It may be just like in the circuit analysis, we say high impedance. Same way, this can be defined. There can be a threshold defined between 0 and 1. And if that is received, then the receiver will come to know that it is neither 0 nor 1. It is not passing the 0 threshold also, 1 threshold also. So this is an error. So it can use a reverse channel for ARQ. So communication will remain completely error free. But the disadvantage is what? Additional reverse channel and additional time. The disadvantage is the requirement of the reverse channel and there is an additional time. Time is wasted in asking to send the information back. But always when you have to pay for something, we will have to be ready to lose something else, right? That is what is the compromise which we do here. When you want to get something, you will have to lose something always. So, now for a BEC. P of y slash x is, we can write it this way, x1, x2, y1, y, y2. You can see y1 slash x1 is p, y1 slash x2 is 0, y2 slash x1 is 0, y2 slash x2 is p. In between y slash x1 is 1 minus p, y slash x2 is 1 minus p. Now this is going to be the channel matrix for a binary erasure channel. Now using this matrix what we do later on, let me cover it in the next class because it is already time up now. Let me end today's class. I will discuss more about this BEC in the next class. Until then take care and bye bye.